Well, on a map in PvP where it is incredibly safe to expand off of uh, Robo, specifically Robos, um, there's nothing really you can do to, to break. It's really hard to kind of maneuver in. Uh, blink is kind of an option, but you don't really have that much room to, to wiggle around because the cliffs are pretty significant. Yeah, there's only one area, I would yeah. say. And, and so it's like, I can blink up here, but my opponent's army is already going to be here. So it's only if they go to expand. But really think, if they go to expand, I can just always position my units right here. So I think Blink Stalkers, they're, they're still a little bit relevant. Don't get me wrong, there are areas over here where you can barely mm -hmm. blink out, but... Uh, I think they're a little less effective than other maps, let's say Antigua Shipyard. That's a really great map for Blink. Mm -hmm. So let's introduce our players before we talk more about the PvP metagame. In the bottom right, we have Puzzle from Kinda Team easy. Slayers. Now, you I off, was right? looking at your screen to make sure, because I always want to introduce the right players, gotcha. and I was on White Ross screen, so I wasn't sure. I just want to make, just want to confirm. And in the top left, we have White Raw, who is... He's not contracted by any team currently, right? He's not part of Duck Load anymore. Mm -mm. So he's just White Raw, sponsored by like TT Sports and Play M and all these other great companies. Of course, uh, guys, these these companies are in the sponsorship so that you know you guys can support them as well. So White Raw is a great guy if you ever want to support. And that will be all I'd say about that. We see White Rock going for very standard things in the top left, and you can see Puzzle also mirroring. Now Ohana, let's talk a little bit more about Ohana. Uh, since Ohana is technically a rush map, you can open for a little bit more aggressive openings. We talked to some people in the past. Uh, an earlier gateway is not necessarily bad. 11 gate can be pretty good on this map. Yeah, actually, Naniwa. Should I go over Naniwa? Oh, can okay, Genius really hear okay. what we're saying? Naniwa has been a big. That's true. <laughs> Naniwa has been a big proponent of going 11 gateway and actually scouting with a zealot rather than going with a probe. And I was questioning this for a little bit, but he says, no, you can normally get in there and uh, that extra money that you get from the probe, probe being alive for a couple minutes mm -hmm. is actually a lot more helpful. And the Zealot comes in a great timing. You just chrono boost out your Zealot and you're good to go. Uh, and you get normally a scout of everything and you can get at least one probe. If you can get at least one probe, it's pretty much even. So that's um, straight from Naniwa's wor uh, mouth. Yeah. It's and uh, I, I was going over, I was like, yeah, actually, you're absolutely right, given the amount of time it's out. Uh, but both these players are going to probe scout, but uh, I would say Naniwa's uh, logic is, is superior in this point of view. I think uh, it's an important trademark of the growth of PvP, because a lot of people are really caring about early game scouting, and there's lots of ways to get it. Rotterdam has a really cool PvP build as well that is really intent oh. on getting early game scouting. Now look at this. A Stargate. Now, Phoenixes have a very interesting role in PvP. They're very good against certain things and awful, awful against other openings. Uh, Phoenixes, of course, yeah. not necessarily good against Blink, terrible against DTs, but they are fantastic against Robo openings. And of course, if you saw the PvP that uh, MC played against Sasa earlier in the Red Bull Battlegrounds, lots of mind games with Stargate as well between uh, actually using it if you commit to Phoenix, not really committing to Phoenix, just getting a couple, trying to force your opponent to get into Blink Stalkers. So that kind of mind games can come into play as well. Yeah, don't forget, um, it's also good against any Sentry-based openings, especially Sentry <laughs> Expands, um, because a lot of players, just like Antigua Shipyard, base their defenses off of, you know, uh, putting down two force fields, and then you're pretty good to go against any potential pushes. You can section off some units and then uh, obviously kill them. But uh, Phoenix has obviously messed that up as well because you can just pick them up very easily and all of a sudden you're in a great position. Now, uh, let's see if White Raw... Oh, actually, mm. did I say White Raw is getting a Stargate? Mm, I think well I did. Well, either way, I, I knew I said Puzzle went for I'm Stargate. Puzzle. But Puzzle's going to send the first Phoenix out just to get a good scout of the yes. opponent. He's going to see 3 gate Robo. And White Raw originally was going to uh, go for some kind of a role play, but now he has a Twilight Council start as well after seeing the Phoenix. And that's a good choice. That's what you want to do because there's a really nasty one base, uh, immortal sentry stalker zealot and uh, and phoenix timing that can hit. And if you go for an expansion right away, there's very very low chance of you stopping that. Because remember, you don't have any sentries if y your opponent's going force er, force fields. If your opponent's going phoenixes, it's because phoenixes can just pick them up immediately and just kill them in, in a flash. 
So you have to be very careful about relying on force shield to keep you defensive. And that's why, um, you know, he's going for this blink so he can make sure he can take them out. Also have a little bit of map presence. Having blink on the middle of the map actually gives you the ability to just move around and you can blink away in case you do get force shield or something like that. So now Puzzle going to finish uh, his robotics, going to start that Immortal, just like you were saying. White Raw, uh, still trying to be very, very cautious with how he does anything. Doesn't want to give up any probes. You can see his observers moving out, and he's going to see the robotics follow up as well. So that one base all-in could still be very much in play, and White Raw is going to have to play it safe. He was thinking about expanding. Is White Raw going to still expand? Hmm, been interesting. Yeah. And yes, he will. Look at that. Ooh, a great trap from White Raw. He's going to pick off one of the Phoenixes. And uh, this is great defense from White Raw. Not uh, shutting down any play from uh, the Phoenix are capable of making. And also getting a good scout on his opponent. Puzzle scouts his opponent expanding. He's going to expand as well. Okay, so uh, he didn't actually go a lot of Phoenixes. It's only been three so far. Yeah. And that's the big problem also. Uh, White Raw doesn't have any indication to know that it's he's only going three or not. So it could have been a huge pressure. It could have been, you know, well, something like this. White Rod just killed the observer. Oh, really? Uh, with his own observer in Phoenix. So Not bad. Very uh, good. White Rod did scout his opponent, just like you were, uh, we were pointing out before, but White Rod doesn't have good indication of his opponent's defenses. Just yet. He knows the Sentry, Zealots, and Immortals do exist, which hypothetically, if they get all their DPS and Stalkers, would crumble. But with good Blink Micro, anything can happen. And is White Rod just faking aggression while trying to hold off any kind of pressure on his natural? It's it's not faking, it's more so just having map oh. control. I think he just wants to limit his opponent's options. So if he does push out with some sort of immortal push, uh, he's ready for it. Remember, it still can be a cancelled Nexus immortal push. So he can't get complacent with this. Nuda, another observer drops. So that's two observers in favor of Puzzle. He's picked off yet another observer. And so the third one comes out for White Ross, still making it his only observer on the map. And that can play a really uh -oh. huge key, especially with the Blink Stalkers. Uh -oh. oh, another observer sub sighting. And White Ross loses his third observer. God. But at the cost of perhaps one Phoenix, but no Puzzle with great job. And that's exactly what you need to do. These Phoenixes have just paid for themselves, killing three observers? That's so crazy, man. Observers are so expensive. You might think, no, it's only 25 minerals, 75 gas. That's a lot of gas, and that's a lot of time on the robotics facility that you're not allocating to something more, you know, juicy, more fruitful. Colossus, Immortals, etc. Oh finesse. my god, is this going to be... that what you're saying? Oh, Don't another No, with more strength, down. actually. Oh, I was thinking finesse. No, is what you meant, you're absolutely though. wrong. Another observer <laughs> draws, but this time in favor of White Raw. A great snipe indeed. And all of a sudden, you see that uh, Puzzle won't be able to make another observer, at least for a while, unless he wants to take time away from his Colossus, which he doesn't because he knows he has Robo Time advantage. He sees, oh, the robotics just finishing for his opponent. And he's going to harass very lightly as well. Ooh, he can take out, out those sentries, by the way. He needs to be careful, but he's just going to go for the probes for now. Okay. I don't mind that. He can kill him a couple of probes. Look at it right now, seven to zero. You're still pretty good. Income tab shows 46 to 39, so actually you needed those seven probes. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh, a massive blink from White Rod. The force fields prevent the stars from moving any farther back. White Rod loses two stalkers, potentially a third, but no, he's gonna immediately back off. That was a very costly scout from White Rod. Yeah, and that's the big problem with going blink stalkers on this map, especially at this period in time. I should say. Uh, you can't really do those type of shenanigans against uh, a Phoenix opening just yet, just because normally they do have those Immortals there, so, I mean, they're going to shut Blink Stalkers down very easily. So, unfortunate for him, but already we're seeing the disparity in supply, and I think it's just because of the openings. I mean, the openings have really given way to having an advantage for Puzzle. And uh, right now, Puzzle does have couple things going into his favor. Thermal Lance will finish as well as plus one. Now, plus one may not seem that big of a deal, but it is, especially with Colossus, uh, just because it's two shots, it's, it's two damage, which gives him a lot more AOE spread ac across mm -hmm. units, so you'd be hard-pressed to find a Protoss player who doesn't want upgrades onto his Colossus. We see that immediately Puzzle's moving for a third base as well, which is a really good move because he's really safe defensively after taking out this guy. And White Rye, I think, will be following up with the same thing. He's just waiting until he gets his core upgrades for now. Um, mm, well, he went double Robo. Did he? Yeah. 
Okay. Well, that's standard off two base. Uh, these days, it's been standard, I should say. Still, I feel like the quality amount of units inside of Puzzles Army is much better. As you can see, these three extra Immortals really constitute so much. So much DPS. And it helps out with that main engagement. So it'll be a little bit difficult. Not only that, we also have to mention the lack of scouting of White Ra. White Ra just has not been able to scout due to those great Phoenixes. With good control, he was able to shut out his opponent from knowing what was going on. Think, it could have been carriers that puzzle was going. And White Ra has no indication of that coming. Uh, I'm, I was just obviously being traumatic mm. with that. but <laughs> No but one's going to, in their right mind, go carriers. Ever. Ever in <laughs> PvP. <laughs> Who would ever go p carriers in Except PvP? Except there's this one really cool <laughs> build, right? Where so you go really no one warp build. gate. Oh you go God. immortal void ray. Greetorp has this ridiculous PvP build where he just goes no warp gate into carriers. And I'm, you don't, now on paper that sounds stupid. Yeah. And Greetorp did get zero two'd by Nanny Wall Wall. I did get zero two'd. But yeah. it has potential. And, uh, I, I beat I beat Grandmasters on on U.S. server, so <laughs> I should just replace it with Korean <laughs> server. We see stalkers <laughs> engaging and immediately disengaging. You can see White Raw has charge also in queue, just behind Puzzle. He's just been slightly behind Puzzle because he opted to squeeze in that extra robotics. Now that's five Colossus in favor of White Raw and Colossi numbers get really funky past six or seven where uh, it all of a sudden doesn't necessarily become about how many Colossus, but it matters about the position you can get and how much splash you can inflict upon your opponent. And But I do want to mention one thing. Charge is about to be researched. Charge is actually really important, especially when your opponent doesn't have charge because they tend to wrap around the army quicker, so they don't go into this line format so quickly. And it actually makes the Colossus only attack like single or, or only a couple zealots at a time. So I really think that charge will help out quite a bit. And not only that, the Immortals. Don't forget, if you get flanked by the Immortals, all of a sudden the Colossus, uh, for the defender of the Immortals, has to reposition. And that is potential DPS. Ooh, Ooh. nice blink up here. A blink onto the one of the Colossus. Uh, for one of the Stalkers, it's not uh -oh, that bad uh -oh. of a trade whatsoever. There he goes. And White Raw is not only able to, to snipe the Colossus, but see what his opponent has composition-wise. I think, I think he caught sight of the charge lots. And uh, if not, he can click on them now and have a good strong indication. White Raw immediately uh, overstaying his welcome. You can see the Phoenix is harassing oh. the Colossus. Wow. Oh, watch out. That oh. one Phoenix. Imagine if you went mass Phoenix, is like how much damage would you be able to inflict with the Stalker's <laughs> no, right? not even there. But um, I do want to mention now the Archons help out as well, as the Archons are another layer you have to deal with. They are range four, I believe. Is that right? Three, 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 three. What am I thinking? Oh my gosh, range four Archons, so yeah. sick. Uh, but <laughs> uh, that that act that extra layer actually makes it a lot harder because again the classes have to go through the Zealot layer and then the. Archon layer, then the Sentry Immortal layer, and then finally the Colossus. So there's a lot of layers to go through, whereas Waira is really only like one. It's Zealots. And uh, he's got some Stalkers, so he's got a couple yeah, layers. Yeah, that's true. But he's not, he's not the onion I know he can be. Yeah, he's more like a trident piece of gum, where they have that just that one layer in the Correct. gummy. And I'm like, dude, this is not layers at all. It's the worst false advertising ever. But White Raw is now approaching max. Plus three is finishing for Puzzle before White Raw even has plus two. That is going to be mighty fearsome, especially with Archons against the Zealots. They'll be able to uh, absolutely annihilate them. And the Colossus. White Raw has his units completely sectioned off. You can see the Charge is already working on some of those units. White Raw is going to try to back up and set up a stronger Concave. And Puzzle has to be really cautious. He could be walking uh -oh. into a trap or uh -oh. he could be walking oh, into the man. greatest the catch of all time. Colossi completely exposed without the charge lots. White Raw trying to cut wow. back as much as possible. His Colossus advantage all of a sudden disappearing. White Raw has his Stalkers also engaging on the Zealots, not necessarily blinking forward. He's trying to flank with his own Zealots, but look at the decimation of the Protoss army and the Puzzle rolling over White Raw. GG well played. Puzzle takes game number two in very dominating fashion. Thank Strong understanding of PvP and great execution. The engagement did it for White Raw. I mean... Uh, he was behind, I think, from that game, but yep. the engagement really solidified everything. When your Colossus are blindsided like that and they have to move out of the way before actually attacking, well, you know your opponent's going to take a massive lead. Yeah, that plus three also did not That's true, yeah. uh, do anything in that battle, just letting you know. <laughs>
Yeah. I'm just teasing. Guys, let's look at the closer mo let's take a closer look at what just happened. Now the big thing is these uh, the first damage applied was immediately to yeah. Colossus. Now they had to spend time walking away from the battle. Exactly, and that's while the other two, are shooting. Like two shots. Two shots over your opponent. That's With a lot plus of DPS. Three advantage it's a lot of DPS going to all those zealots. That's so probably a good 500, 600 damage before your opponent can actually do any Colossus sprays. By that time you lose all your Colossus. GG well played. Oop. GG well played. <laughs> and Puzzle moves into a very convincing first place in his group. Well, MC still on his tail. Morrow falls just a little bit. And Polt yep. makes up ground. But again, uh, we'll wrap everything up actually with division standings and daily recaps, predictions, also announcements, and uh, maybe even some bonus features. Who knows? But the possibilities will be announced after this. We want to thank iBuyPower and uh, GameMinder, the smartphone application and the pre-assembled PC company. Check them out at handleauber.com for GameMinder and iBuyPower.com.